So basically, ladies and gentlemen, the first important thing, though, when we're solving quadratics is we have to have our quadratic set equal to 0, because the purpose of that, Austin, is so we can apply the zero product property. All right, So we have to have everything set equal to 0. So in this case, I don't have an equation set equal to 0. But what I can do is add 5 to both sides. And therefore, I have 6x squared plus 11x plus 5 equals 0. Now I have an equation that is set equal to 0. So to factor, so to factor this, basically what I need to do is just go back to my um, diamond that I've talked about, which is a times c. Now if you guys remember, a times c comes from the standard form of your quadratic, ax squared plus bx plus c. So you guys can see that a is equal to 6, b is 11, and c is 30. So a times c would be 6 times 5, which is 30. And b is positive 11. Now, when you're doing these, these types of little problems, what you're trying to identify again is what two numbers multiply to give you 30 and then add to give you 11. All right? Now, if you get stuck with this, please spend the time, take 30, and write out all the factors. And start with 1. Is 1 a factor of 30? Yeah, it goes in there 30 times. Then move on to 2. Is 2 a factor of 30? Amy, you're not doing anything better than what we talked about outside. Now you move on to 3. And you just keep on, getting, you keep on going up to larger and larger numbers. Um, and obviously, 4 is not a factor. But then you can move to 5, and you get to 6. And then that's it. So I would start with the lowest number, and then keep on getting higher and higher and higher till it, start, till it would go on to the other side. Now, um, these two numbers multiply, give you 3, add, give you 11. What are my only fact, two factors that do that? 6 and 5. So you write 6 and, oops. Does everybody follow with that? Yes, yes. All right. So now, basically, what I'm going to do is write 6x squared plus 6x plus 5x plus 5 equals 0. Does everybody see that? Nick, do you see that? OK. So now, what I want you guys to understand is what we're going to do is just like we did last class period, or just like I did last example, when we have two, you know, product, when we have two polynomials, we multiply them, we find the area of the box. Basically, what we're trying to do now is say, hey, here's the area. Find the side lengths of the box. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a box. And I'm going to make it um, two squares in there. And so since I have four terms, I'm going to put these four terms in there. Okay, does everybody see what I did? I created my box, I created four of them. All right, and then I now placed them in there. So now what I need to do is identify, you know, what are my terms that I can multiply that will um, multiply to give me six. So does anybody have any two terms that multiply to give you six x squared? Yeah, Jamie. Two times one gives you six. OK, so 3x and 2x, let's go and look at 3x and 2x. That's a great option. So if I did 3x times 2x, now 3x times what gives you 6x? Plus 2, right? 2x times what gives you 5x? Uh, it's a fraction, OK? So 2x, 3x and 2x are not going to work that way. So why don't we do it this way? Why don't I write the 3x up top and the 2x on the side? Well, again, that works up here. But again, can we multiply 3x times something by an integer to give us 5x? No. So you've got to be careful when you're identifying them. It's OK to go with, hey, 2x and 3x. But try to look ahead and see, will 2x and 3x work? Will it divide into both of those um, row or columns? And the answer for this example is no. But I can use 6x and x. And if I'm going to use 6x and x, the only way for me to label it would be like this. Then, if I know that the height of this box is 6x, then 6x times what has to give you 6x? Plus 1. x times what has to give you 5x? Um, x plus 5. Now, do you, guys, do you guys agree with me 
that this times this gives me all of this. Okay. So we can write it now 6x plus 5 times x plus 1. This times this is the same as that. Would you guys agree with me? All I did was I took that and put it in a box. Do you guys agree with me that's the same? Yeah. I'm having a really, really tough time, Sierra and Jamie. Do you guys agree? I know. Do you agree? Yes, I agree. Okay. So if these two, this equation is set equal to 0. So therefore, you're going to set the exact same equation equal to 0. So now you can apply the zero product problem. You can say 6x plus 5 equals 0 and x plus 1 equals 0. Now you can go and solve x equals negative 5 sixth and x equals negative 1. Okay. Now let's take a similar